Okay, let us go ahead and, and get started here. Chapter 12, lesson two. And this will be all about population. Um, we're gonna start off by focusing purely on the United States. Um, we'll then get into conversation about the world um, and, and ish, other issues. But, but let's start here, we're gonna say luck. Um, in general, in the United States, our population center is moving west, which makes sense because the East Coast is where the country was started and everyone lived there at first. And then as the country expanded west, we slowly saw the population center moving west. Um, there's a really interesting table here or, or a map you can look at from the book, figure 12.3. And by 12, 2010 and south, Okay, west and south. Um, it's really interesting. You can kind of see that it's gone um, up a little to the north and then down, but it keeps moving west. 2010, it was uh, near the middle of Missouri, um, moving west and south every decade. So kind of an interesting fact about our country. It makes sense, though, because there's more open space in the west, and, and people are going to move to the open space. Um, We talk about states with slow growing population versus states with high growing populations. What is this here? Um, we have a population change map and this is, is just in the 2015 era, but you can see that um, Mississippi, Illinois, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, and Wyoming all lost people. Um, in this one year period, the California, our state is gaining, but only about less than 1%. Um, you can see that there are states that are gaining quickly, Utah, Nevada, um, Idaho, Florida, Washington. These are 2.0 for Utah, and then 1.9, 1.8, 1. 1. 1.8, Texas, 1.5. So um, our state is not growing at the rate that other states are growing. In fact, we had a, a census in 2020. This is the newest information. And um, the states in purple gained seats. In, so in this 10-year period, their population increased more than the national population. Texas was the most. Oregon, um, Colorado, Montana, I think. Um, North Carolina and Florida and the states that lost a seat, California. We didn't lose population. We didn't grow at the rate of the rest of the nation, but really a lot of these Northeastern states are losing seats. They're losing population. Look, these areas are cold, okay? Um, and this is where all the manufacturing jobs were. And as manufacturing jobs have gone away, people have also left those areas. Like why stay in this cold environment when, when we can go somewhere that's warm and has more jobs? Um, so we're seeing changes in the population makeup of our country. Um, our population growth has, has slowed down. Um, taking a look here at this graph, you can see that um, all the way at the beginning, we were growing at about 35% um, per decade. That, that's a huge percent. And in the most recent decade, we're going to grow about 7.1%. Before that, it was still less than 10 in the, in the aughts, I believe they're called. Um, and yeah, our, our population growth has slowed. The whole world's population has slowed in terms of growth. Um, so I mean, that would make sense there. Um, I can speak and just kind of colloquially about, about my experiences. You know, my, my grandparents um, came from families of like eight brothers and sisters, and, and I have two. Uh, my, my parents had two. I, I only had like a brother and a sister, right? two siblings, families of three, families of three. Um, I only have two kids, and then I might have another. Um, but, you know, my brother has two, my sister has two. Um, a lot of my buddies growing up have one. So people are having less kids. Um, populations are gonna shrink. And, and why is that? Or, well, maybe kids are becoming more expensive, you know, in, in this time era. You know, you have a farm. America was a farming country, and, and you, you have a bunch of kids so they can work the farm. And, and people didn't live as long, so you want to have a 
you know, a bunch of kids when you can. Um, now people are living much longer. Um, you know, making it to your 90s isn't as rare as it once was. I, 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 you know, I had two grandparents, one who's still alive, who was in his 90s. My grandma was 96 when she died. You know? That was unheard of 50 years ago. Um, and um, kids are getting more expensive. College is getting more expensive. Um, housing, and maybe that's why. I don't exactly know why. Maybe people are seeing, you know, overpopulation happening and the, the global warming, and they're saying, um, let's let's slow back. Um, not having so many kids. These are these are unanswered questions. We we can postulate, but we don't know for sure. Um, another kind of interesting fact here: when we look at, um, they just came out. We had a census with, with population growth numbers um, through 2019. Where our population growth in, in that year it was down to 2.5 percent. Was 0.5 percent. So our population is not is not growing um, at an extremely fast rate. And one more quick little thing here. This is what's called a population tree. You can see that, um, well, you know, older people make up a very small percent of the population in their 90s, but that's still decent sized. Um, but right here, this little bulge, right? This is the baby boomers. And we know that during World War II, the people came back and they had a bunch of kids. Um, this is the millennials, which is another kind of population bulge, but, but you see kind of a thinning here. This is me, that's Gen X. Um, and then down here, you can see that it just keeps getting thinner. It's not whiter at the bottom, it's thinner, um, which means that people are having less kids. Um, so, well, look, one of the things, you know, you got more people living longer, you got less young people working. What does that mean? What does that mean? Programs like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid are going to be threatened. Um, the retirement age or a recipient age of Medicare, Medicaid may have to go up um, because there's just not going to be enough young people working to foot the bill for the old people. And this is a real economic challenge. Um, we don't have the answers. Um, we, we've discussed ways to try and save these programs, well, raising taxes on them, or um, you know, maybe raising the age of eligibility. I don't know what's right. Um, I really don't. So um, we see, you know, that our population once was growing at about three percent, and then now it's down to um, zero point five percent, less than one. Um, and, and one of the things that are that that it's lucky that is that is very lucky for our country and, and, and it's it's just horrible that other people don't, don't they, they speak opposite of it um, but but it's the immigrants coming into our country it's that our country is still a desirable place to move to and that we have people lining up to move in here who can then take those jobs and can help provide for that kind of older generation um, which hopefully we all get to um, in the future. And some people rail against immigrants, right? But we know that economically speaking, immigrants are a benefit to a country. More people working, more people paying into the tax base, more people um, allowing for um, the old to retire and, and, and at a decent age and, and enjoy benefits. Um, and if it were not for immigrants, we would probably have a shrinking population. In fact, we're going to find out the fertility rate amongst Americans is, is below the reproduction rate, a replacement rate, meaning that our, our population will be going down. In fact, there are countries around the world whose population is going down and that they're not having a lot of kids. We'll find out. Um, and this is a challenge. This is a threat to the future of those countries. Um, so yeah, the immigrants coming into our country are a huge benefit and economically speaking, and um, are allowing us to have some kind of population growth. Um, there are more who would like to come if we're looking to increase our population, just open the door a little wider, I guess.